The Hart Biesport Dam is battling an explosion of invasive water hyacinth, which is thriving due to high water pollution levels. Historically, the floating plants have blanketed the water and starved it of oxygen. Mahali's Water was appointed to fix the water quality problems wrought by the plant, and it forms part of the by the plants rather, and it forms part of the Crocodile West catchment area. David Machai is Machali's water spokesperson and joins us now. David, good evening to you and welcome. You've been charged with developing a water resource manage management plan for the Crocodile West catchment. Explain to our viewers what this entails and how the dam forms a part of that plan. Thank you, Iman, uh, for the invite and good evening to your viewers at home. It is indeed true that uh, Mahali Swat has been appointed by the Department of Water and Sanitation for a period of three years to develop a water resource management plan, which in essence is a strategy of one dealing with the poor raw water quality in the Crocodile West catchment area. And in that specific regard, our task is to try and improve the water quality in the catchment area, including water in the Hartebies Port Dam. Two part of our work includes us dealing with the much talked about uh, hyacinth, which you referred to in, in your introduction, to see how we can reduce its domination over the heart based program because it is common cause that currently ecotourism in the Madiden local municipality and more specifically activities around the dam have been adversely impacted by the growth of the invasive plant. So that is what we will be doing. But part of the work also includes us studying recent technology and data around how other organizations in the world have in more recent times been dealing with the growth of the hyacinth where it was prevalent, what measures were used, what technologies were also implemented. Because one of the things that you also have to guard against is the negative impact on the aquatics or on the ecotourism or the ecology of the dam. So we also need to take into mind all of those uh, activities that we will be implementing in the catchment area as well as the dam, but uh, be mindful of any invasive negative uh, impact and how we ought to then mitigate yeah. that. I mean, the dam, and just, you know, cor correct my history here, it's about 102 years old. Uh, and I was reading some research about how the uh, the water hyacinth was actually introduced. It's from the Amazon, I'm told, and was brought, uh, you know, to this area of South Africa because it was so beautiful. And indeed, it is really pretty to look at, except you can't, as you say, it chokes the water system. It, 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 it is beautiful to look at, but it's deathly in, in a sense of uh, destroying the ecological life that is in there and, and all of the other, um, you know, water sports activities that continue to be carried out. When you say that you're experimenting uh, with technologies and innovations, give us an example of some of these. I mean, what, you know, which institutions are you working with and what is likely uh, to, to be the solve? Well, I, I, let me hasten to say, Iman, uh, more recently there was an article that was doing the rounds that we had intended to drain the dam in our bed to deal with the raw water quality in the, in the catchment area as well as removal completely of the hyacinth. But we had, uh, you know, proactively gone to the media to explain that when you look with, uh, at the situation, particularly around the northwest area or the northwest province, when you look at the issue of potable water, it would have been irresponsible even if from an engineering perspective it was possible for us to drain the dam because a lot of farmers in the area and a lot of communities who receive potable water that has been treated by Mahalis water from this catchment area would uh, suffer quite greatly. Now, what we have been doing with our scientific services laboratory colleagues is to study recent data as, as I have uh, mentioned earlier to see what kind of technologies we can implement. It is common cause that, uh, for example, hyacinth is a fertilizer. Some of the people that we've already started to, need to engage are people who are going to uh, see the economical value of what we consider waste. So as we would be clearing the dam, there are people that we have started to engage who can turn uh, this uh, hyacinth into a fertilizer, create job and stimulate the local economy. So those are some of the things that we will be talking to, or some of the people that we are talking to, and some of the innovations that we are intending to plan uh, and implement. But I must emphasize, because this is a three-year project, and we know that we are not the first people to have been given this task of trying to deal with the hyacinth and improve the raw water quality. We are not going to prematurely make pronouncements on what we need to do because we are alive and aware 
uh, of the fact that technology, particularly in the water sector, is evolutionary. So what would have worked in the last three years may not work now because of the, you know, the difference on, yeah. and the changing things in the ecology and the weather. So we are we are aware of the fact that there are other people in other parts of the world that are testing new technology, and we are more interested in that because ultimately our goal as Mahalis Water is to try and deal decisively with the raw water quality in the catchment area and deal also decisively with the rapid growth of the hyacinth. We yeah. have no I understand. So, sorry, David, um, you know, because I, I want to touch on one other thing before I let you go. Uh, there was um, talk of using uh, some insects, which are apparently are the natural predators of the hyacinth. In fact, they also hail from the Amazon, uh, again, if, if, if my facts are correct. Um, How has that gone? Well, that, that that was tried, but obviously it was met with a lot of challenges. You know, there were pockets of success or excellence here and there. And it is for that reason, Iman, as I was saying, that our with our appointment, we seek to invest in new technologies, right. new research, to try and do things differently. Because if we are going to repeat what other people would term mistakes, things that were done in the past, we are likely to achieve the, the, the same results. Uh, it's common cause, as I was saying before, you, you, you wanted to also raise that issue to say, part of the reason or part of the challenge that we're dealing with, when you look at the Crocodile West catchment area and the Harti Vespor Dam, is the disposal of effluent in Gauteng, which now makes the, lot, the, the water become more toxified to the extent that this hyacinth doesn't have a, pro, uh, doesn't have a chance of it disappearing over time. So what we are going to do as part of our work is to investigate and pinpoint locations where the discharge of the effluent is being done, recommend to the department appropriate actions that need to be taken because the moment you cut the supply of the effluent into the scheme or the supply system, you have dealt with one part of the problem because ordinarily the rapidity with which the hyacinth will grow will definitely go down. So part of the work that we are going to do is also to advise the department on what needs to do, the appropriate actions against those who are found wanting as it relates to disposing effluent into the system and also now other methodologies of trying to completely deal with it. David Machai, thank you for talking to us. We appreciate it and I'm sure people living in the area um, will pay particular interest to what you're telling us, especially when it comes to the reduction of the water hyacinth on the Hartebeer's Port Dam. Khali's water spokesperson there, David Machai.